Well, greetings to you again, dear friends. It's a, it's a blessing to be able to do this one more time. Well, thank God. Thank uh, JR. Give JR a shout out again for his inspiration and for being used of God to lead me to do this. <clears throat> uh, today, I want to follow up a little bit on the last video I made. For those of you who are able to see it on this platform and wherever else it was seen and heard. But we talked about, I talked about repentance last time. And today I want to talk to you out of the 32nd chapter of the book of Psalms. A psalm written by King David. Inspired of the Holy Spirit. And in the 32nd chapter, starting in the first verse, David said, wrote these words. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Second verse. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputes not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. He goes on to say, when I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned to the drought of summer. Selah. And he says, I acknowledge my sin unto you. And my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression. And you forgave me of my iniquity, of the iniquity of my sin. And he goes on. In the final verse, he says, Be glad in the Lord, rejoice ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye who are upright in heart. But in the first, I want to really focus on those first two verses. David said, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Whose sin is covered. In the second verse he says it again. Blessed is the man. Uh, unto the, whom the Lord imputes not iniquity. And in whose spirit there is no guile. I read that to you out of the Expositor's Study Bible. It's an excellent study Bible. The Lord used uh, the great evangelist Jimmy Swaggart to... Exposit scripture in that study Bible. If you don't have one, I would recommend it if you can afford it. But um, oftentimes in scripture, that word blessed can literally be translated as happy. And I don't know, I'm not a theologian. All I have is the Holy Ghost, really, and, and the little Bible study that I do. But many times, when you see the word blessed, like it's used in the book of Revelation, it's literally translated as happy. Happy. So you could say that David wrote, happy is the man whose sin is forgiven. Happy is the one to whom the Lord will not impute iniquity. And in reality... That's it. <laughs> Happy is the man whose sin is forgiven. It seems like everybody in this world, in some way or another, is pursuing happiness or joy in some way. Happiness or joy, which can be the same thing. They're not technically the same thing, but they can be. We're all tr we all want to be happy, even if you're evil even if you're perverted and sin one way or another you're pursuing some form of happiness if if evil you think and you're deluded to the point where you think evil makes you happy committing evil makes you happy you'll pursue that to try to be happy and even the forefathers of our great united states when they declared independence from the tyranny of great britain they declared that 
their declaration of independence, the reason why they're going to fight to be free was to live, to be free, and to try to be happy, to seek happiness. Everybody in the world is seeking happiness. Happiness, joy, peace. Even the forefathers of this nation, when they first declared independence and announced their pilgrimage for liberty from tyranny, did so in the name of the pursuit of happiness, to be happy, to be happy. The reality is, though, however, as I just read to you, there is no true happiness where there is no forgiveness from God. The Bible says there is no rest for the wicked. The Bible says tribulation and anguish to every soul that does evil. Tribulation and anguish. And whereas the Bible says, happy is he whose sin is forgiven, you could read it the other way. Unhappy is he, and speaking of all humanity, not the, not the masculine gender, include the feminine gender in it, he slash she. Happy is he whose sin is forgiven. But as that is so, unhappy is he and she whose sin is not forgiven. Whereas there is now no condemnation, no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, there is condemnation to those who are not in Christ Jesus. There is no rest for the wicked. There is no happiness. And there are many, many scenarios and many reasons why we struggle in this life. And many are the afflictions of the righteous. So you could argue that the Christian doesn't seem very happy given the struggles they go through and all that. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's a different conversation for another day. But inside, regardless of what we go through, those who are free from condemnation, those whose sins have been forgiven, we are happy in Jesus Christ. We have peace within. I can say that in the middle of what's been hell on earth the last couple of years. At least I know in my heart that I'm happy in Jesus. And the things of this world don't satisfy me. But there is a weight there's a guilt that weighs you down when you're a sinner, when you commit sin. And some of that, not only not only does it come from God, but it comes from Satan as well. Satan will tempt you to sin. And then once you sin, he'll turn on you. And he'll point the finger at you and he'll accuse you and he'll start sending the sorrow of this world that works death. There is a godly guilt there's a godly sorrow the, the scripture speaks about that will motivate you to Jesus to, to repent. But the scripture says that sorrow will work life. But the sorrow of this world works death. When you're a sinner who's lost without Christ, not only are you under condemnation, but you're under accusation from the enemy of your soul, from the devil, from Satan and hell. And it's a guilt that will weigh you down. That'll bring you down to unhappiness. Not only are you empty within because your soul and spirit are, are empty and dead without Jesus Christ. But you're burdened down with a, a, a weight of guilt that you can't carry. A load of guilt. It's like the whole world's on your back. Unhappy is he whose sin is not forgiven. David said, when I kept silent, my bones waxed old. And you could say unhappy, uh, whose sin is not forgiven. That applies to the child of God as well. If you have unconfessed sin in your heart, if you've done something wrong, and especially the child of God, because we have the Holy Spirit who will convict us. Satan will accuse us, of course. He's the accuser of the brethren above all. But when the Spirit of God convicts you, and when you know that you hurt the one that you love the most, Jesus Christ, you're not happy. But those who have their sins forgiven, we have a happiness when that load is gone, when that burden is gone, 
And like I said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. We still go through trials. We still grow, go through troubles. God leads us through those times. Some through the water, some through the blood, some through the, some through the fire, some through the flood, but all through the blood. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy. And the hill would not be hard to climb. God leads us through tough times. God purifies his children. Happiness is not the end in this world. Or what the, the world perceives as happiness. But happiness is always on the inside of those who have their sins forgiven. It's that immediate, immediate release of forgiveness. When God forgives you, when he takes it away, when he wipes it off of heaven's record. Happy are you. Happy are you. There is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Last video I made, I talked about my friend who, I'm going to try to keep this one shorter. We're already in the 10 minutes here. but I talked about that friend I had who came to me and another friend of mine a couple years ago. He had been lost in the sin of homosexuality. I don't know that he claimed to be a homosexual. He might have been uh, playing both sides of the, the fence there, I guess. I don't know. But he talked to me, about, to me about the misery he felt. And me and my friend, about the misery he felt after he would commit those sins. Like I said in the last video, he, would, he told us whenever I'd be tempted... To commit a homosexual act. He said I wanted to do it. He said it was like a fever. In me to do it. But then he said after I did it. He said I was the most miserable man in the world. And he said I will go try to take a shower. To clean myself up. And to wash. That guilt I felt away. To get rid of the condemnation. To get rid of the unhappiness. To try to make my, myself feel human again. To try to make myself feel clean again. But he said it never worked. It never worked. And he said, I felt worse after I took a shower than before. But then he told me and my friend, when he came to Jesus Christ and he confessed his sin and God saved his soul and God washed his sin away and God forgave him. He said, I was happy. <laughs> I was happy. There's a great old song, Jimmy Swagger says, you, the song says, you ask me why I'm happy. And I'll tell you why, because my sins are gone. They're underneath the blood at the cross of Calvary. You ask me why I'm happy. I'll tell you why. Because my sins are gone. The unhappiness you feel, it will remain as long as your sin remains. Day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My bones waxed old, David said. And it'll take more than a shower to make you feel happy again. To make you feel happy to begin with. You need the forgiveness of God Almighty through the blood of Jesus Christ. You can go after money. You can try to satisfy your soul with money. You can try to find happiness through money, through wealth. You can try to find happiness through popularity. You can post your social media pictures, get the likes. You can try to find happiness through pleasures. You can feed the flesh. You can do things you want to do in this world. You can try to find happiness through lust, through fornication. <clears throat> you can try to find happiness through the party. You can try to find it any way in this world. But you will never find it outside of God's forgiveness. Happy is the man. Not only are you blessed in God and Christ when your sins are forgiven, when, you, when you're in union with Christ because your soul is filled with His Spirit, with the Spirit of Christ, with the Holy Spirit. Not only are you, are you happy because you're united with God, but you're happy because your sins are gone. That which weighed you down, the guilt, the condemnation, Jesus takes it away when you put your faith in Him. Jesus takes it away. You can seek happiness in this world and you may find it for a minute. The Bible said there's pleasure in sin for the season, for a season. 
There is pleasure in sin for a season. You seek happiness through this world, you'll find it in the middle of the party. You'll find it in the middle of that sexual affair. You'll find it in the middle of a homosexual act, probably. But once it's over, once it ends, once you wake up the next morning, you step away. Once you're alone with your soul and spirit and you're alone with the accuser. Guilt, unhappiness, loneliness, depression, it's all coming your way. Unhappy is the man whose sin is not forgiven. Cursed is the man whose sin is not forgiven. There is condemnation to those who are not in Christ Jesus. You can seek it through anything in this world. I'm telling you, you will never find happiness. And you can look on to me, you can look on to other people and see all the trials we go through and claim we're not happy. That's not true. We are happy in Jesus. We have the peace of God within our hearts. We have the joy of the Lord that is our strength. We are happy. I'm happy. And you ask me why I'm happy, I'll tell you why. Because my sins are gone. They're underneath the blood at the cross of Calvary, as far removed as darkness is from dawn. The joy of sins forgiven, the happiness the blood washed know. I'm forgiven. Jesus took away my sins. God took away my yesterdays and gave me peace within. God took away my yesterdays. Sin stacks up. Sin accumulates. You can't just sin one time, go on to, to tomorrow, sin again, and think that yesterday's sin's gone. Some of you could be living under a, a weight of sin that is years in accumulation. But I want to tell you in one moment, and, and the guilt that could bring you, and the unhappiness, I could probably never describe it, what you feel when you lay down your head at night. And I'm speaking to those of you who have conspired against this world. When you're together in your conference rooms, you probably feel so confident. When you see some of the, the evil you've planned against this world, it may bring you a temporal feeling of happiness. But friend, there's a guilt coming for you. You're being used by the devil to plague this world. And it could be the beginnings of tribulation. I don't know. It looks like it, but I don't know. But you're not going to be happy. What you're doing, you're thinking you're going to be happy. Greed is motivating you. And you think if you get more, if you get more, you'll be happy. And when you're together, you smile. But you're not happy, man. Because only happy is the man whose sin is forgiven. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. You can pursue it, but you're not going to find it if you don't have Jesus Christ. If your sins have not been forgiven by God. Happy is the man whose sins, happy is the woman whose sins are forgiven. Think about your past. Think about your many yesterdays. If you don't know Jesus, if you haven't repented of your sin, if you haven't confessed your sin to God, all of that remains and it weighs you down. Your unhappiness is not in the lack of things you have. I'm telling you, some of you don't understand why you feel that way inside, why you're never happy. It's not in the lack of wine in your system. It's not in the lack of substance in your system. Your unhappiness is tied to the sin in your heart that is accumulating with every wicked act you commit. You're not going to find it. You, you inside, if you don't understand this, what David taught, you'll go to another party thinking you'll, you'll find happiness. You'll, you'll try again to get more wealth. You'll try more pleasures. You'll try more sex. You'll try more homosexuality, more sodomy. You'll try to become a transgender. You say, I'm not who, not who I want to be. I need to change my gender. You'll be more unhappy if you do that than you were before because you'll add more sin and more of a curse to your record.
You're not going to find it. You don't understand it, but it's sin in you that is making you unhappy. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Happy is the man and the woman whose sins are forgiven. Try Jesus. He never fails. Try Jesus. You ask me why I'm happy. I'll tell you why. Because my sins are gone. Get rid of that load of sin at the cross of Calvary. And I'm telling you, you will experience a freedom and a happiness you never knew before. Happy is the man whose sins are forgiven. Happy. It's not in your lack of money. It's not in your lack of popularity. It's not in your lack of social media status or whatever else. It's in the abundance of your sin and your lack of forgiveness. Happy is the man who is forgiven. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Talk to Jesus. Get rid of that burden of guilt and sin. Don't keep silent. It'll grow. He said, my bones waxed old. David did when I kept silent. When he sinned against God. When he committed adultery and murder. Terrible sins. And he kept it within. He couldn't even talk to God about it. But he said it waxed old. That means it progressively grew worse and worse for him. And the misery grew by the night. But he said, I confess my sin to God. I would not keep silent. The longer you keep silent and you keep your sin within, it's going to grow till it corrupts and poisons you within. You need to let it out. Confess. They say confession, confession is good for the soul. It's, it's never more better than when you confess your sin to Jesus Christ. Get rid of it. It'll grow. It'll weigh you down. Happy is the man whose sin is forgiven. You won't find it in another homosexual affair. You're not a homosexual. My, good, my dear friend sought it. He thought it would make him happy. But he was more miserable to where he found himself in the shower trying to wash himself with soap and water. But it never worked. But when he came to God's Son, came to God the Father through God's Son, repented of his sin, and was washed clean by the blood of Jesus, he was happy. You ask me why I'm happy. I'll tell you why. Because my sins are gone. They're underneath the blood of the cross of Calvary. If you want to be happy today, repent of your sins. If you want to find true happiness, you won't find it in wealth, you won't find it in popularity, you won't find it in sex or anything else. But you'll find it in forgiveness. Forgiveness of sin. Happy is he whose sin is forgiven. Think about my friend's testimony. Think about your own life. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. I don't know who wrote that song, but they, they hit it. They hit the nail on the head. You ask me why I'm happy. I'll tell you why. Because my sins are gone. If you want to be happy, get rid of your sin. And there's only one way to get rid of your sin. You can do all the good works you can do. But it's just soap and water. Our righteousness is filthy rags. You're not going to clean yourself up with, with anything you can do with the flesh. Because it's in the heart where the problem is. But if you come to God's Son by faith, believe that he'll forgive you. And then once he's forgiven you, believe he has forgiven you. Nothing you can do can make up for it. As a matter of fact, you'll be more miserable if you try to make up for the, the wrong you've committed against God. And that's who you have harmed. That's who those of you who have conspired against this world trying to murder millions of people. That's who you've harmed. You've harmed God. You've touched his precious creation. You've turned against his purpose for your life. You rejected his love for your life. That's who you harmed when you sin. You harmed God. But God loves you. And if you want to be happy, get rid of your sin. And get rid of your sin through faith in the blood of Jesus. Repent. Confess. Believe. God will save you. God will forgive you. You ask me why I'm happy. I'll tell you why. My sins are gone. If you want to be happy, call on God the Father. Put faith in his son. Put faith in his blood. The Bible says the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. 
and you will be happy and you will be blessed. God loves you. Call on Jesus today. Repent of your sin. Repent of your sin. I'll be praying for you all. God's speaking to you today. God is speaking. I feel it. I don't know who this goes for. I don't know who, who watches this. But God's speaking to you. If you want to be happy, if you want to feel peace, my grandmother gave her heart to Jesus Christ when she was, I think, 75 years old. And you can imagine, she wasn't a bad, she was a wonderful woman. It wouldn't seem like she'd accumulate too much sin, but you can sin just by thinking the wrong thing. But when she gave her heart to God after 75 years or so, she told my mama, I'm so happy I can't stop singing. And she went around her house singing the entirety of the day. Happiness, peace, and joy. Even in the storms of life, even in the many trials God leads us through, there's a, there's a peace of God within. Happiness. And then the child of God who does sin, when we repent, it comes right back. If you want to be happy, confess your sin to God, repent your sin to God. Repent of your sin. Confess your sin to God. He'll forgive you. He'll forgive you. Repent that your sins may be blotted out and that the times of refreshing may come from the Lord and that you may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. God loves you. God loves you. God wants you to be happy. Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. God wants you to be happy, and he'll make you happy if you believe in him and his son. I love you all. I pray you got something out of this. If you want to be happy, turn to God. It's not in money. It's not in popularity. It's in forgiveness of sin. It's in union with Jesus Christ. Turn to him. You'll find it. Love you all. God bless you.